This is your derailleur. This is your cassette. This is your chain. This is your chain ring. And this is your shifter. And you'll need to know a little bit about all of those things to make your bike stop shifting like garbage. Let's do some more anatomy. This little guy up here on your shifter is your barrel adjuster. Then back here at the cassette, these are individual cogs. The big ones are your low gears and the small ones, your high gears. Then on your derailleur, this is the body of the derailleur. This is the cage. These are your jockey wheels. These are your limit screws. And this little guy at the back, that's your B screw. This is your derailleur cable. It clamps to the body of the derailleur. This little guy here that your derailleur bolts into is the derailleur hanger. I know that sounds like a lot of anatomy, but stick with me. We're gonna go over all of it again. Now, every time we hit the thumb switch, the derailleur is actually shifting up the cassette into larger cogs or lower gears, it is actually pulling on the cable to make it do that. When you are shifting into smaller gears or higher gears, it is actually loosening the cable and causing the derailleur to spring back towards the bottom of the cassette. Uh-oh. Now, if your shifting isn't working properly, it's making clanging noises, it's shifting in between gears, it's skipping around, there are a number of different things you can check with a chain wear checker, derailleur hanger, alignment gauge. I would imagine if you're watching this tutorial, you don't have any of those things. And so let's start with a visual inspection. If your chain is completely haggard, might be time for a new chain. If you have broken, worn looking teeth all over your cassette, might be time for a new one. All of those things can affect shifting and you can just look at the bike to see whether that might be the symptom and so start with a visual inspection, but there's other things that you can look at. Here, if we pedal the bike, we can see that the chain is making clicking noises and it's skipping around. Take a look at it, which way is it skipping? So you can see as I'm pedaling, that chain is trying to move onto that larger cog, but it can't quite make it because the cable's not tight enough. How do we know that? Well, because that's what it is 90% of the time. Cables don't magically tighten themselves. They end up getting looser over time because the cable stretches or the ends settle into the housing. And so let's try tightening the cable and see what happens. You can make little adjustments with your barrel adjuster. You actually loosen it to tighten the cable a little bit. So I would start with half turn. So now as we start to pedal, we can see it shifts up into there. Now it almost stays in gear. Let's try tightening it a little bit more. So we'll just go another half turn here. Let's try shifting down, back up. It's working, but let's shift through all the gears to make sure it really is. Make sure we didn't go one gear too high. So when your bike is more or less shifting okay, but it's still making those clicking noises and the derailleur appears to be crashing into your cassette, you might wanna check your B screw. So with an initial visual inspection, it appears that this upper jockey wheel is way too close to the cassette. You can see it just rubbing against it. When we adjust this B screw at the back of the derailleur or your B tension, what you're actually adjusting is the distance of your upper jockey wheel from the cassette. And so if we tighten it, it's going to move it away from the cassette. And then we can try it again, see if it makes disgusting sounds. So that seems to solve the problem right away. Why don't we just crank down the B tension all the time? Why shouldn't that just be the only setting? Well, if your B tension is too high, when you go down to your smaller gears, the jockey wheel is really far from the cassette and it's gonna have trouble keeping the chain in the right space. It's gonna skip around. And so the correct way to set B tension is to shift through all of your gears, get the upper jockey wheel as close to the cassette as possible, without crashing into the cassette or shifting hard. So start further away and then start bringing it in until you start getting adverse effects and then back it back out. Not very scientific, but that's how you do it. So you learned a thing or two, now you're working on your derailleur and you have it shifting more or less perfectly in like two or three gears. And then if you go too low on the cassette or too high on the cassette, it just starts to skip all over the place. What's going on? you probably have a bent derailleur hanger and you can check that with a visual inspection. So the alignment of your derailleur hanger has to be so precise that actually they make a gauge for it, but you don't have one. And so sight down the back of your derailleur and look at the piece that it's attached to. Is it kind of bent in one direction? Now, if you can't see it visually, 
There is another test you can perform and all you're gonna need is a cup of water. First, remove your back wheel and then the derailleur hanger. It's gonna be held in with some screws or possibly your axle, you can figure it out. Once you have the derailleur hanger loose off of the bike, you're gonna drop it into a cup of water. I like to use a clear glass, four ounces, four to eight ounces is gonna work. Drop it in. And if it sinks to the bottom, you should try replacing your derailleur hanger. Now, I must have done this demonstration three or four times in different videos, YouTube shorts. Somebody always chimes in with, I'm a flotation engineer at the Academy of Complicated Science and derailleur hangers are made of aluminum and aluminum sinks. No sh The float test is a joke. It goes right over people's heads. It's a joke. What I mean is replace the derailleur hanger and see if that fixes the problem. If it doesn't, you can put the old one back on or keep it as a spare. Doesn't hurt to have extra derailleur hangers and that is the root of many shifting issues. So you've made micro adjustments, you've adjusted your B tension, you've even replaced your derailleur hanger, your derailleur is shifting perfectly, but then you're riding down the trail, you hit a bump and this happens. Ah. Ah. You're minding your own business trying to enjoy your day and then your chain shifts into your wheel. It's probably your limit screws. These two screws on the body of the derailleur that are next to each other, those are your limit screws. They're going to control your low limit and your high limit. So here, you can shift into the smallest gear over here and actually grab the body of the derailleur, start pedaling, and you can actually push the derailleur through its gears. If you are able to push it into the wheel, you have to adjust your limits. Those limit screws should physically stop the derailleur from doing that so that if you hit a bump and it jumps, it doesn't just shift your chain into your spokes and cause all sorts of carnage. See, if you look closely, you can see where the screw makes contact with the derailleur body and stops it from moving anymore. Just look in there as we tighten this, it's actually going to stop it from moving any further. Now, if we tighten it too much, then you're not gonna be able to shift into your largest gear, but if you get it just right, it can shift into the largest gear and not any further. And that's how you set your limits. But now that we got through all of that, I can show you a few finer points about drivetrain issues. So before I mentioned a specialty tool, a chain wear checker. These don't cost very much. You can pick one of them up on Amazon and you can check to see if your chain is worn out by inserting it into the chain, pulling down tightly over here and seeing whether you can insert this probe into your chain. The deeper you can insert this into your chain, the more worn out it is. But there's another way you can check. Hook your tape measure onto your chain, stretch it out to 12 inches, and at the 12 inch mark, it should fall exactly on the edge of a chain link. If the chain link's a little longer, like an eighth of an inch, even a 16th of an inch, your chain might be worn out and it's time for a new one. Another little tip, this little barrel adjuster is for micro adjustments. If you find yourself just cranking this barrel adjuster, eventually it's gonna max out and that's not good. What you really wanna do is bring the barrel back in, loosen up the clamp on the body of the derailleur and actually pull it a little bit tighter. Try to get it close enough and then do the final adjustments with your barrel adjuster. And for that matter, when you are adjusting the tension of your cable, you wanna first shift into the smallest gear to do so or else it's gonna be fighting you. One other thing, throughout this video, I've been using a specialty tool that many of you do not have, a bike stand. I did that to make it easier to demonstrate, but you don't need one. You can just turn your bike upside down and diagnose just about any drivetrain issue. With this newfound knowledge, maybe we can figure out what the hell's going on with this bike. This is my father-in-law's e-bike. It is all business. You can tell by the stack height. Not only does it shift like garbage, but it actually pedals like garbage. Listen to this. Let's start with a visual inspection. It's a little dirty, but I don't see anything that's that worn. In fact, you can still see the cassettes nice and shiny. The bike's not that old, and so that makes sense. And so we can rule out that everything here is worn out just by looking at it. So let's pedal it and take a look at what it's actually doing here. I can tell by where the shifter is that it is supposed to be in the lowest gear, but it is in the second to lowest gear. And so what does that mean? Cable tension 
is probably the culprit. Now, do you reckon it's too loose or too tight? Remember what I said before about 90% of the time it's too loose. Let's try tightening it. So let's start with the barrel adjuster. Actually on this bike, the barrel adjuster is on the derailleur itself. Let's give it a half turn and see how it shifts. I think we're gonna have to do a float test. Now I don't need to float test it. I have a derailleur hanger alignment gauge, but I can use it to illustrate that the derailleur hanger is definitely bent because we checked all those other things and it's still shifting horribly. So let's try. And it's funny how there is a derailleur guard here, yet freaking derailleur hanger still out of alignment. Oh yeah, oh yeah, way out of alignment. Okay, she should be back in alignment. So now we can put it back on, adjust the tension and see if it shifts right. Okay, up into the bigger gear. Down one, down two. Shifts well, this is not exactly the most high performance shifting system there is, but we can see that it shifts through the gears correctly now that we have aligned the derailleur hanger. Now I understand you don't have a derailleur hanger alignment gauge, but if you would have used the float test, you would have replaced the derailleur hanger with a straight one and achieve the same result. So for the audience members that already know how to work on drivetrains, I realized that I left a lot out. I realized not all of this is by the book. That's because it wasn't meant for you. You already know how to do this. This is to get somebody who hasn't really worked on a drivetrain before up to speed and able to diagnose certain shifting issues. And I'd say we've covered about 90% of them, assuming you have a semi-normal bike. I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you learned something. And if you already know how to do all of this and you didn't learn anything, I hope you at least feel like sharing this video or maybe you were entertained. Thanks for riding with me today. I'll see you next time.